<laughs> Welcome back. I'm certainly glad to see you today. You ready to do a fantastic little painting with me? Super. Tell you what, let's start out and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along. While they're doing that, let me tell you what I've done. I've got my standard old canvas up here, and I've covered it with a thin, even coat of the liquid white, and it's all wet and it's ready to go. So let's get started. I'm going to start out today with the old two-inch brush. Shoot, we'll just have a good time today. Just have a good time. I'm going to take a, a little bit of phthalo blue here. Just work a little bit into the bristles. There. Let's go up here. Now then, let's just start up here making little, little crisscross strokes, little X's. There. See, the color continually blends with the liquid white, and it gets lighter and lighter in value as it works downward. And in the landscape, that's exactly what we're looking for. We want it to get lighter and lighter toward the horizon. There we go. A little bit more color. And we'll just come right on down like so. Wherever. Wherever. It doesn't really matter. Thought today maybe such a fantastic day. It's a good day to be alive. Let's let's just do a nice happy little scene. Just sort of let it happen. Let's see, let's see what we come up with. Now very lightly, just gonna blend the entire sky. All right, that worked out pretty good. Shoot, let's keep going here. And we'll take some blue and alizarin crimson. We'll just mix a little bit of this on the brush. Thalo blue and alizarin crimson. I want, a, I want a little lavender color there. Something about like so, it doesn't matter. Let's have a happy little cloud that just sort of floats around. We'll put in some dark. Just using little round circular strokes, a little bit of dark shadow color. And we'll come back and we'll highlight that little rascal. We'll make him shine, stand out in the sun. With just little circular strokes. There we go. Maybe he comes, we don't know, somewhere over in here. What the heck? Just let him go. Let's wash our brush. And if you've painted with me before, you know we wash our brushes with odorless thinner. Shake off the excess. <laughs> and just beat the devil out of it. That's the most fun part of the whole thing. I'm gonna take a I'm gonna take a one-inch brush. One-inch brush. Pull it through the white. I'll be right back. I'm gonna reach over here and get the least little touch of a lizard crimson. Just a small amount. Okay, let's go up here. Now let's take and you could do this with a fan brush or a two-inch brush. I just thought I'd use a one-inch today. Just want to put the indication of some nice, beautiful, fluffy little clouds that live up here in the sky. And they float around and have fun all day. Just wherever you want them. Wherever you want them. There they go. There they go. There they go. See? One after another. As many or as few as you want in your world. Let's go on up here. There. I'm going to pick up a, just a touch more crimson. Just to put a little warm glow in these clouds. It looks like the sun's having a good day and he's sparkling through there. There. Now the paint that we use is very dry and very firm. And that way you can blend all this while it's still wet. If you use a thin, soupy paint, chances are you're going to become a mud mixer, and you're going to be you're going to be unhappy with me. I don't want that to happen. Be sure your paint's very dry and very firm. There we are. Now I'm just gently, gently blending. Gently blending. Okay, and we'll beat the brush. That just removes excess paint from the bristles, and we can continue to blend here. Just blend it all together. Knock off the excess one more time. Now then, very lightly, I'm gonna fluff this cloud up. Just grab it and fluff it. Just allow all this to come together. See there? But once again, now if you're using a thin, oily paint, oh, would you be in trouble here? And you'd really be upset. It's most critical that you use a paint that's very dry, very firm, and then this works. You can blend all this color without, without it mixing together. Okay, isn't that easy? Well, we've got a whole bunch of big fluffy clouds just floating around there. I'm going to take some more of the phthalo blue, a lizard crimson, proportionately. Much, much more crimson than blue. 
There we are. I want a dark lavender color here. Take a little roll of paint right on the edge of the knife. And let's make a big decision. Maybe there's just a nice little hill that lives we back there it goes really push this into the fabric now i want these to be rounded on top just just some nice little distant hills there i got a letter the other day and somebody wanted to know why i didn't paint some hills like it was in the east there so i thought we'd just do some nice Nice little distant hills today. Because they're fun and they're beautiful and they're quite easy to do. Take our large brush and very gently grab that paint. Because the canvas is wet, we can move it, we can blend it. See, and we can just pull it. Let all kinds of little things just happen. There. See there? That easy. We can make the indication of some very nice little hills back there. And that's basically, basically all you have to do. Now I'm blending the bottom of it out, allowing it to mix with a liquid white, so it creates that illusion of mist down toward the base. Okay, maybe we'll have some rolling hills on top of that. Use the same old lavender color. I'm going to add a little black to it. Just tap a little bit into the, into the brush. Okay, now. You have to start making some decisions. Maybe there's a hill. Oh, he lives right there. See? Just big, nice, beautiful, rounded hill. And all we're doing right now is putting in dark color. So we're, we're certainly not committed at this point. We can change our mind. We can move this. We can do anything that we want to do. Okay, maybe there's another one here. I don't know. Just watch here. Watch here. Maybe you want to change. See how you can make this one? You can change the shape, you can make it taller, shorter. There. However you want it, just let it go. Let it go. Okay. Tell you what, when I got the little brush going, shoot, I'm just going to have some fun. I'll take some brown, crimson, crimson, black. So we got Van Dyke brown, black, crimson, little blue. I'm just going to basically just paint this in. I know all this is probably going to be covered up in here, so let's just paint it in. That's when that big brush really comes in handy. You could do this with a paint roller. All we're doing is applying some dark color. This is also an excellent scene to use some liquid black in and do all of this. easy. That'll save us a lot of work later on. Shoot, I'm lazy and I look for ways that make it easier. Use that same old dirty brush. I'm going to go right into, right into, uh, cad yellow. Cadmium yellow. Reach over here. I get a touch of the yellow ochre. Just a touch. And tap some color right into the bristles. Just tap them. Okay. Now then, maybe back here, just all kinds of beautiful little things that are on these hills. Now, this is where we begin creating the shape, form, lay of the land, whatever you want to call it. This is where you start taking your time and, and really making these things look good. Every once in a while we'll get a little, add a little titanium white to our color. I want to make that hill stand out from the other one. See there? Boy, that son of a gun stands out now. As it comes around, it's going to get darker and darker, darker, darker. There. It's fantastic what you can do. All right, right up here. There's one. I'm going to add a least little touch of the bright red to my color. I want this one to look at there. Maybe Jack Frost has come through there and he was having a good day too. Just layer after layer after layer. As many or as few as you want in your world. Of 
Okay, come right on over here. Maybe this one comes up and goes like that. We don't know. We don't know. Doesn't matter. However you think they should be, that's the way they ought to be. There we are. Okay. A little more in there. But you can put hills down here, too. That easy. Now, sometimes on little distant hills, you have like little trees and stuff that are little patches of trees that have really, really grown and get strong. So we'll mix up a little lavender color again. I'll just use a fan brush, what the heck. Get a little bit of that color on the brush. And maybe, maybe we're gonna have some little things that live right here between these two. And we can just take the brush and just tap. Just make the indication of some little Little patches of trees and stuff that live right in there. Maybe over here is another one, wherever you want them. Just put a couple here and there. Just breaks it up a little. And we can come right back, clean up the edges, put all that back. Okay. Shoot, that was fun. Let's do some more. Take some more blue, black, alizarin crimson. clean off this old knife. I just wiped the knife on some, some paper towels there to clean it. No big deal. Or a soft rag, whatever you happen to have. Okay, maybe back in here, maybe there's some little trees. And I'm pushing very firmly here. Maybe there's just some little trees, see, that live right in there. Like so. See, strike firmly. to make some big decisions. Where do they live? There. It's fantastic that you can make that many little tree indications that quick and that easy. You can. You can. There they are. Okay. Maybe we want to create a little mist at the base of these. We can just tap, just using a clean, dry brush. Tap firmly. See there? It creates that illusion of mist. There we go. Looks like those trees are just sort of sitting in some soft, misty area. And it's very easy to do it if you're doing if you're doing landscapes, you need this mist between each layer. That helps separate and brings them apart, and it makes your painting special. Okay, I get carried away sometime here. This gets to be so much fun. Maybe there's some little trees that, I'll just use a big brush since we have it going here. Maybe there's some little trees that are a little bit closer. Use that same color. I want to put in another layer, just layer after layer. We'll just keep using these two inch brushes. Shoot, they're a lot of fun. I'm gonna take some yellow, reach over here, and I'll get some bright red. We said Jack Frost was beginning to play here. So just tap a little bit right into the corner of that brush. Right into the corner. I want a nice bright color. Ooh, isn't that nice? Look at that. So you can just use this two inch brush, use just the corner of it, and put all kinds of beautiful little tree shapes. You know, when we finish this series, my gosh, there'll be nearly, nearly 200 Joy of Painting shows. And I certainly hope you enjoy them. If you hadn't got to see all of them, call your local station. They're available to them. If you'd like to see some that you haven't, shoot, just give them a call. They like to hear from you anyway. There we go. Another question that I get repeatedly is what in the world I do with all these paintings that are left over that we from the shows? And we donate these paintings to PBS stations all over the country. And they auction one off and they make a happy buck to help them out. So if you'd like one, give your station a call and tell them to tell them you'd like to see one and you'll be willing to make a 
make an offer on it if they had one. Help them out. They need your support. There we go. But see, just using the top of that brush, we've created a beautiful row of trees here. It's unreal what you can do. Now then, clean, dry brush. I want to create a little mist at the base of this. Just a little. I just want to distort it. I don't want to, I don't want to destroy it. It's very easy to get in there. And it gets, oh, it gets feeling good. And you just, you just destroy it. But all we want to do here is just mist the base of it. Just so it sort of floats around. I just use the same old two inch brush. Let's go right into some of our yellows and greens and all those pretty colors. Just tap the brush. Give it a nice little tap. And that's come right down. See, by changing the angle here, we'll create a new and different plane. Very soft and gentle. Look at that. There. I like that. I like that. I like soft paintings. They're a little harder to do than harsh paintings, but I like the soft velvet look. And with a little practice, you won't have any problems. Not any at all. Look at there. Okay. Well, we're just coming right along here. See, when you're when you're painting like this, stand back and look at your look at your work. Son of a gun, you'll see all kinds of beautiful little things happening in it. And one of the one of the joys of this is that you can change your mind in midstream. You're you're not committed to your finished. You can we we have no patterns, we don't we don't worry about having any predetermined notion of where we're going. That may be one of the most fun things about this. Let me put a little dirt in here. So you stand back, take a look. And you might start off in your mind with something going on, and halfway through the painting, change your mind and decide, well, that's not what I want. I want to do this. I see that. And that's where the freedom comes in. That's probably, to me, the most impressive thing about painting this way is the freedom. You have total and absolute freedom here, a little brown and white, because I've just seen something here. That's why I'm, I'm going through all this talking. I see something here I want to change. It just, it looks like a natural to me. So, let me get a little yellow, little yellow, little green on my fan brush. Okay, now I'll bring a little, little grassy things right down here into this dirt, rocks and stones. That sort of cleans up the edges and brings it all together. Let's see if your imagination is as wild as mine, because I see a beautiful place right here for a happy little stream. So let's try that. I'm going to take, first of all, I dip the brush into liquid white, then go into titanium white. The liquid white is there only to thin the titanium white, so it'll flow over this other color, and a little bit of blue in it, just to give it a little color. And in my mind right here, there's just a happy little stream that's coming down here and it's splashing and carrying on and whoops, bloop, fell over right there, see? There's a stone under the water right there and it made it just, it had a happy little accident. Look at that, wherever you want it. And there's all kinds of little things happening and just little bubblers going on there. Look at that. Boy, in our world, we can do anything. We can literally create little streams. Maybe, 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 yep, boop, see? Another little thing. Tell you what, watch, watch. Getting excited now. Boy, this, you can get carried away with this. Maybe there's some stones that live here. There's a stone, see? Just Van Dyke Brown. Maybe over here, there's another stone, however many you want. Just drop them in. There's one. See? Take a little of that brown and white, and we'll put the indication here of a little highlight on top of that stone so it stands out. Now, back into my liquid white, titanium white, 
a touch, just a touch of the phthalo blue. Just a touch. Now then, here comes my water. It's running along here, hits these stones and goes poosh and just crashes right over. Look at that. Look at that. And it's splashing down here. Boy, there's just all kinds of things going on. There it comes over the top just like a day at the races. Look at that, just, I'm about to run out of canvas here. Maybe, maybe we can nail another one on the bottom, keep going here. This is just, hmm. I better stop. I have to finish sometime today. Now, I'm gonna go back into my lavender color. Let's put some land over here and close this in. So I say, if I get, if I get going here, we will never get this rascal finished. My imagination sort of catches on fire, and off we go. And I've got a director back here. She'll come out here and drag me right off the set if I don't get finished in time. There. Now and then, and I'm going to pay for that comment. You watch. A little bit of grass right here, just to sort of bring all this together. On the other side, we need some little little grassy things happening here too. We'll just bring it right down, sort of bring all that together. And little cad yellow, Indian yellow, yellow ochre, touch of the bright red here and there. Whatever, whatever. Just sort of let them come together. Look at all that. Isn't it fantastic how that little stream just sort of, it just seemed like it was a place that it ought to live. That was where it should be. And when you're painting, look around in your painting. You might want to change your mind at any given moment, and that's your privilege. I want to add a little Prussian blue right in there too, and some Van Dyke brown, some crimson. I want this dark. Maybe over here in this corner. We've got to fill that up. Maybe, there we go. Maybe. Maybe, yep, there it comes. There's a nice tree, it lives right up here. I'm gonna go into a touch, the dark sienna. I want this to start getting lighter as we work upward. I tell you what, this tree, this old tree, yep, he goes right on off the canvas. There. And maybe, who knows, maybe, maybe there's another little tree right here. It sort of leans over, hangs out over this. Let's put one on the other side. We don't want that left out. Dark sienna and some of our other dark colors. There we go. We'll just have another one, a little leaner here. It sort of just closes that all in, makes it look nice. Makes it look nice. Take a little brown, paint thinner on the liner brush, and we'll just, here and there, we'll put in the indication of a few little trunks and sticks and twigs. That easy. Let's go on the other side here. We have a tree here. Zoom. Really helps you make those little noises. Of course, your family sort of looks at you like you, you're weird, but that's all right. That's all right. As long as you're happy. There. See there? All those little sticks and twigs. And, oh, here comes another one. Let that brush wiggle and jiggle and just let the paint flow. I like trees that are, oh, they've had rough lives. They are all sh kinds of funny shapes and got arms that stick out everywhere. They've got some character to them. Shoot, these old telephone pole looking trees. They're no fun. These are fun. There we go. All right, all right. I'm gonna grab, I think I'll use a one inch brush for this. What the heck? little touch of the liquid white, pick up a little bit of dark color, so when we touch the yellow, all that'll turn green. Tap a little bit of color into the brush. There, nice. Let's go up here. Now then, think about, start with this one, what the heck. Think about individual limbs and parts in these trees. Don't just throw them on at random. Look at there. Mm. 
let that come right on down here. All these little bushy leaves and branches and stuff. That's what makes your tree have shape and form. Let's add a little yellow ochre, maybe even, shoot, we can get crazy and add a touch of the bright red, just a touch, just a touch, don't want to get too, oh, that's pretty, that is pretty, Jack Frost had a good day there, boy, was he having a good day, hmm. I like all these colors, but now, in your world, you paint whatever color that you want, because we're each individual. Each individual. We travel all over doing shows all across the country. And we meet so many fantastic people. There. All right. I'm going to take my big brush. I'm going to go right down here. Clean up the bottom of this. Bring it all together. Look at that. Leave us dark under these trees because normally there's a big shadow under these trees. Like so. Son of a gun. A little bit over here, and I think we have a finished painting. I'm gonna grab the old liner brush and paint thinner on it. Let's sign this one. I think we'll call it finished. A little bit of red, thin down, and we can just write our name right on there. I hope you've enjoyed this painting. I've certainly enjoyed being here with you today. It's a fantastic painting. It'll teach you the versatility of this method. And from all of us here, happy painting and God bless. Production of this program is made possible by a grant from the Martin F. Weber Company, manufacturers of fine artist materials, and by Langnickel, manufacturers of select artist brushes.